Hello, I'm Victor Jernigan and this is Serious Information About Real Estate. Today I'm going to be speaking on student housing and the storm clouds that are on the horizon for that type of rental investment. Tonight, it's May the 12th, 2020, and we've all been able to see how the COVID-19 pandemic has changed the delivery of education in this country. We've seen how schools have been canceled, students have been sent home, from elementary to master's PhD programs at, at the universities. Everything closed down, everybody went home, and everybody received a new kind of learning. Now the question gets to be, how many people will show up at a major college or university if they don't get to experience a true college lifestyle? And that is the issue that we're talking about with student housing. Because this is just rental property that is focused on delivering housing to the students who go to the university or the college nearby. It was an industry that was dominated by mom and pop operators, people who lived in the community who owned the housing that they rented to the college students who went to the local university or the local college. About 10 years ago, uh, after the recession, it, the industry really began to change and national players moved into it. And there have been thousands of student housing units built all across the country. And the issue is the universities have continued to expand. So it's proven that student housing is 100% dependent on the success of the university or the college that it is close to. So when those institutions close and everybody goes home, what is the responsibility of the student housing provider? Because we have seen for sure that the university areas, the college areas, become a black hole of economic activity when the school closes down and the students are sent home. The reality is that it doesn't make any difference how much we want things to be different. It is a certainty that the way in which college is going to be enjoyed or not enjoyed in the fall of 2020 is going to be impacted by how every school reacts to a possible outbreak, re-outbreak, resurgence of COVID-19. It's unlikely that there will be football uh, at major universities. It might happen. But I just can't imagine how you get 110,000 people into Nayland Stadium at the University of Tennessee with social distancing. I just can't see the parties going on the night before the game with social distancing. I don't believe there'll be many major uh, social events of any kind sponsored by the universities and the colleges. So how many people want to pay twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars either from their parents' money or that they're borrowing to go to school without receiving the full college experience? How effective will colleges be in delivering information online and setting up programs to handle quarantine situations when students become infected? How, if, if the universities close down entire dorms, as Purdue is suggesting, where they have space that's allocated just to students who are infected with COVID-19, the issue gets to be then how much housing is going to be left for other students and how will that impact what's going on around the country? Well, you might have heard the dog, one of my dogs barking a couple of uh, seconds ago, which was actually now a couple of hours ago. Uh, I wanted to, needed to check on them to see what was going on. And while I was away, I had heard the news that uh, the Cal State University system, the California State University system, 
is not going to reopen for the fall. Now, that's a different California State University system than the University of California system, but there's 22 campuses involved. And as I was talking earlier on this very video about the risk of student housing, it's going to get to be really messy now because every sports program is interdependent on having other sports programs to play. And it appears that every state now is going to be different than every other state in the way in which they're enforcing the rules at their specific campuses. The idea of empty college campuses is going, the fear of that is going to depress student housing values significantly. Now for the mom and pop operators, the small operators, you've got lots of flexibility. You may have a house that you've converted into four apartments. You uh, may have um, a house that's uh, just rented out to UST stu university students, wherever they might be. But the, so you're going to have to begin to focus immediately on renting to the general population. Forget college students. They may have been a very profitable niche in the past, but if you're going to have to have a pandemic clause in your lease, it won't be good going forward. I started to shoot this video back on the 7th. I, I actually put, put it together back then, but I got sidetracked. I got focused on some other things. I don't own student housing, so I'm just doing this more of a public service announcement, as you would say. But if I'd done it on the 7th, the people who would have listened to it would have gotten a five-day head start on what now appears to be a cascading effect of closures across the United States. So, to summarize on student housing, unless you are prepared to sell for a loss, you're going to have to raise capital to overlive this problem for at least a year, maybe two. Think about what you can do with the apartments other than rent to students. And unless you're prepared to take a lot of risk, there's no reason to think about buying student housing today. The goal now should be, if you do think you want to buy student housing, wait until October, because by then the blood will be running everywhere. I really do appreciate everybody listening to, and watching the videos. I want to make them interesting for people, and I want absolutely for you to learn something that makes you a better real estate investor. Please like the videos, subscribe to the channel, and send me comments on things you want me to comment on because I am eager to provide the information that will make you a better investor in the future. Thank you very much.